Hey everyone. So since I can't sleep, I'm going to share a little bit with you. I want to encourage some of you. Uh, if it looks dark, it's because it's after midnight and I'm sitting in my car outside. So it will be a bit dark as you're listening to me, but that's okay. Um, you know, like the prophet Micah said, do not rejoice over me, O my enemy. Though I fall, I will rise again. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord is a light unto me. <laughs> okay, so, all right. <laughs> I, I just want to share with some of you, it's no, it's no secret by this point that the church has been stifled in many respects. And in different states in the U.S., for instance, as well as man, many parts of the world, the church has been facing intense persecution as well as um, some restrictions that, for, for instance, those of us who live in the West, we're not used to. You know, we're not used to having this, um, you know, this limited assembly. It's, it's abnormal for us. We're not used to having the, you know the um, unrestricted freedom to just meet and assemble and worship the Lord as we see fit. It's, it's strange for us. Um, and some of you, you know, I'm worried about some of you because I think, I think many of you, you've, you've withdrawn somewhat from the church. You know, maybe your church isn't assembling now and, you know, you've been meeting online with your, uh, or listening to sermons online and, and so forth, joining Zoom meetings and that kind of thing. All that's good. But I think many of you, you know, you've been, you've been hurting these last several months and you're not sure why, you know, you don't know, you know, you would just wonder why does, why do I, you know, why do I just feel dry? You know, why does my, um, why do I feel disconnected from the Lord? Why does it feel, why, why do things feel heavier now? It's not just the events happening outside. I mean, there's, you know, I'm in Oregon, there's fires, riots, etc. There's a lot going on here. There's no, no shortage of things to be concerned about, but it's not that. It's spiritual, you know, and, and you know that. You know that, you know, when you talk, you know, um, maybe when you talk with your family, it's, you know, it, it's, you feel strangely alone, even though your family's there. Um, you know, some of you, you've um, haven't had a real hard time praying recently. I want to share with some of you because... The church of God, people, you must understand, Paul says is the pillar, the house of the living God, the pillar and the ground of the truth. The church is not optional. Now, how you assemble, that's up to your local leadership. But I will say, listen to me, I had this sense a few, you know, uh, back in March when the U.S. officially uh, entered lockdown. I wasn't opposed to, you know, our compliance, okay, personally. Um, I'm just sharing my opinion, what my opinion was at the time. I was willing to, you know, to sort of go along with things, but nevertheless, I immediately thought when I heard that churches are no longer assembling, I thought to myself immediately, although I didn't say it to anyone, I thought this will make the devil happy. And it does, you know, you know, it's, it's probably become, you know, sort of a, a trite, you know, almost platitudinous thing that probably many preachers have you know, um, spoken on that the devil enjoys your isolation. He wants to keep you separated, but you know, truly, I, I think many of you, you, you need the reminder, you know, you need fellowship of the saints. You say, well, but Ethan, I am the church. Can I tell you something? That expression, I am the church has always bothered me. There's an, it is, it has no biblical precedent. There's no such thing as I am the church. We are the church, not I. Now you can enjoy the benefits of the church. You can um, uh, you know, receive the promises and blessings accorded to the church. But the church is a, is a unified body. If all were the hearing, where would the smelling be? And if all were the sight, where, the, you know, if, if we were all a hand, where are the feet? And if all feet, where hands? If all were the heart, where the spine? You can't have only one member and assume that you have a complete church. In the same way, you cannot take one stone, one brick, one, even one foundation stone and have a complete structure. Architecture is not completed by one stone. We are living stones, Peter says. You are also living stones being built up into a house for the Lord. Let me bring you to Ephesians 2 briefly. 
I just want to remind you what our call is, what the purpose of the church is, what we do and what we are to the Lord and what he is doing with us. I'm going to read to you from verse, excuse me, Ephesians chapter two, verses 19. He says this, I'm going to read from the English standard translation. He says, so then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you, in him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God in the Spirit. You are the temple of God and God dwells in you. Now you say, but Ethan, well, exactly, I have God dwelling in me. Yeah, you're right. But other people need that, you know. Your fellow believers need that. It's not, just, it's not just about you. It's not just about me. Now, it's important that you know that God is in you and not just in someone else. He's not only in your local pastor, you know? Your local pastor doesn't have a special, you know, measure of the Holy Spirit, you know, that's inaccessible to you. It's not so. You also have, have the living God dwelling in you. But other people need what you have. And the thing is, people, when you gather together, there is, you know, a corporate anointing. There is a corporate spirit at work. You know, in the book of Revelation, there are the seven churches and they're what are called the seven spirits of God. Now, I'm not going to discuss, I'm not going to get into that in too much detail today, but the point is that the Holy Spirit, the one spirit, abides in the local churches separately, individually, and in unison. God is for individuals and God is also for the whole of the church. You need, you know, sometimes you wonder, why is it when I go to church, you know, we start singing, we worship, you know, it's like, I can just feel the Lord's presence. I have this great experience. And then I go home and, oh, just dry. You know why? There's a couple of reasons why. One of them might be that you haven't perhaps learned as all of us are in a process of learning. Okay. There's no condemnation in this. All of us are in a process of learning, but maybe you haven't learned how to practice the Lord's presence on your own for yourself. But also part of the reason is frankly, the, the anointing is concentrated. The Holy Spirit is concentrated in the assembly. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst. Now, he's with you individually already. Okay? He didn't say, I'm not with you if it's just you. No such thing. The Lord is with you. He's with your spirit. But he's with the assembly. In the wilderness, in the, ta the tabernacle of Moses, the tabernacle of witness that, w that the children of Israel had in the wilderness, God was in the center of it. All the tribes were encamped on the four sides of the tabernacle, right? The 12 tribes were, 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 put up, were stationed on the four sides of it. The tabernacle was in the center. So who was God with? The whole assembly, not just the individuals. He was with the individuals. Okay, I'm not here to undermine your personal relationship with... The you cannot be saved by corporate faith, by the way. You must have personal faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no, you know, self, there's no shared salvation. I can't be saved for you. Okay. You must believe for yourself. But when you gather together with other people, each one has a gift. Each one has a grace gift that the Holy Spirit has put in them for the whole, for the, for the edifying of the whole church. And the thing is people, you know, some of you, you wonder, you know, you, you, you feel, you feel lost. You, know, you feel like you've lost some direction. Things, it just seems like things are darkening in your thinking. You're discouraged. You don't know why. You're confused. You really don't know why. You have questions. You, you're struggling with things you felt like you've never struggled before. You don't know why. You need the assembly. See, someone in the church has a word of wisdom you need. Someone in the church has faith and as a gift for prayer and for intercession that you need. And also... Someone needs an encouragement from you. You have a revelation. You have a song. You have a gift of the Spirit someone else needs. You're an answer to their prayers as well. God has given the answer in you. He's deposited it in you through His Spirit. The church needs you, and you need the church. You're part of it. 
You are living stones, coming together to the true and living one, the living Lord who is resurrected, the cornerstone, the sure and tested foundation stone. We are built on him. And we are built on the apostles and prophets. Now, there's a, you know, a description of perhaps apostles and prophets in the church, but primarily the meaning there is apostles and prophets, the Old Testament and New. The New Testament is the apostles. The Old Testament is the prophets. You're built on that. You need that. I want to read to you from John chapter 10. Before I do, I just want to mention something briefly. To those of us who are shepherds, okay, to those of you who are teachers, pastors, listen, I'm not telling you you need to, you know, just make your church gather together, okay? Probably many in your church won't assemble together right now. Many people are afraid to. I understand. But there must be some gathering. Listen to me. I, I, I just need to put this out there. If you read the prophets Jeremiah and Ezekiel, you'll find that the rebuke that the prophets gave to the shepherds in Israel at the time, was that they did not gather the scattered flock. The flock is scattered. They did not gather them. They were sick. They did not bind them up. They were hungry. They did not feed them with knowledge. That's the problem. Okay, those of us who, you know, we are, you know, those of us who are called to be under shepherds, those of us who have a pastoral gifting, listen, I'm sorry, there's no, there's no alternative to the assembly of the saints. There is no alternative to the general assembly and church of the firstborn to which you have been called. We must gather together the sheep. It's mandatory. You know why the you know why the good shepherd in the parable of the lost sheep had to go and find the sheep? You know why he left the 99? Because one sheep on its own will die. Guaranteed. If you're separated from the shepherd, separated from the flock, you die. Now, none of you are separated from the shepherd, okay? I'm not saying that you're on your own. I'm not saying the Lord has left you. That's not what I said. But I am saying that there are gifts, there is a power, there is a working of the Holy Spirit that goes on in the corporate church. Paul does not say that you individually are being built up. Just you individually, I should say. He doesn't just say that just as an individual you are being built into a house and habitation for the Lord. The whole church is. Body is. And let me say this as well, people. The Lord has compassion on you. If one member suffers, all members suffer with it. The Lord loves you. Do you know that Ephesians 5 says that he, the Lord nourishes and cherishes, cherishes the church as a man does his body? When you have a toothache, what do you give your attention to? Your tooth. It's a tiny member, you know, but you give your attention. You have a headache, same thing. You, you know, you, you have a cramp in your leg, you know, maybe you have shin splints, you know, you're hurting somewhere. You give attention to that member, your stomach hurts. You give attention to that member individually because you feel it. See, the Lord can feel the pain you're going through. You're a member of his body. When you're hurting, when you're suffering, the Lord feels it. It's like a stabbing pain. He can feel it. He knows you. He knows what you're going through. He cares for you. I'm going to read you something briefly from John 10, and then I'm going to call it a night. John chapter 10, listen to Jesus. He says this. Verse 7, John chapter 10, verse 7. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Go find your food in the Lord. Jesus is your shepherd. He is your bread of life. Find your sustenance in him. Are you thirsty? Are human relationships not satisfying you? Drink of the living waters, the well of water, without, without money, without price. Whoever drinks of the waters from the world will thirst again. Whoever drinks of the water the Lord gives will never thirst. But it will be in him a well of water springing up to everlasting life. I'm going to go on. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. I came that they might may have life and have it abundantly. Notice they. See, the thing about sheep, by the way, sheepfolds, is it's not a solo affair. None of us can just say, I am the sheep of the Lord. We are, we, we. The psalmist says in Psalm 100, we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Sheep, collective, collectively, sheep. 
sheep, all of us, sheep, under the care of the shepherd. The Lord wants to gather you. Jesus goes on to say in John 10, he will have one fold. He will gather them all together, have one fold and one shepherd. The Lord is over you. He'll take care of you. Look for him. People, let's learn to be pastoral. Let's learn to shepherd one another. Let's follow the Lord's example. And let's follow the chief shepherd. There's only one great shepherd over the sheep. The Lord Jesus, who was brought again out of the dead. Let's trust on him. He loves you, people. He's going to take care of you. He'll comfort his sheep. He'll restore your soul. He'll feed you. He'll deliver you in the time of darkness. His rod and staff will cover you. He'll prepare a table before you. He anoints your head with oil. Your cup runs over. He will not abandon you. In the house of the Lord, you will dwell all the days of your life. Amen. I love you people. Praying for you. God bless.